I love encouraging people. I love bringing forth the word. And um, I'm, I'm so grateful to have the outlet to, um, to be able to do that because it's, it's, um, it's just something that gives my heart great joy is to, to bring an encouraging word. So tonight's word is, our suddenly is at hand. Acts 16, verse 25 and 26. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. I'm going to take a look at Ezekiel 37, verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Acts 2, 2. Chapter 2, verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Acts chapter 9, verse 3. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. You know, I've been listening to prophetic words um, on my way to work, streaming it from my phone to the Bluetooth. I'm very selective about who I listen to. If the proof is in the pudding, if what they say is coming to pass, then I'm going to put more stock in what they're saying. But something I've been hearing so often lately is the word suddenly. And I am hearing it a lot. Not just here and there. I mean daily. I'm hearing the word suddenly and you know when when someone is is telling this really like intense story and you're getting up to this climatic point and then they say and then suddenly I don't know about you but goosebumps come up all over me almost every time I hear the word suddenly it's like an electric jolt goes through my body when I hear the word suddenly. To me, that word suddenly, it gives hope. It's like, oh, whew, yes. <laughs> you know, we, it, yes, it happened. It came. I began to look for examples of God doing his work suddenly. And as I did, you know, I couldn't help but think that there are so many people in my life that need a suddenly to happen in their life. Moreover, we as a country need a suddenly. There is clear, clear evidence, as I just gave you in Scripture, that God can move suddenly. And there are many of us that have struggled and persevered through hardships. We've kept believing for a breakthrough. We've cried out to God for what seems like an eternity. God has heard every prayer. And there are things going on that we cannot see in the natural realm. And even though we can't see it, God's working. The trial, that hardship can and it will come to an abrupt halt. No prelude, no fanfare needed. God doesn't need weeks God doesn't need months. God doesn't need years to continue his work, to do his work. He doesn't even need a whole day. He does not even need a whole day to do his work. He is the same God as then. He is unshakable. He's not moved by circumstances. He's not moved by tears. He's not moved by our begging. It's our faith that moves the hand of God in whatever your situation, whatever your plight, never lose hope. I've said this before. God does unconventional things in unconventional ways. He knows what 
he is doing. And I'm here tonight to tell you he's not forgotten you. He has heard every cry. He has seen your perseverance, and he is faithful to complete the good work that he has begun. And I'm not going to stand here and tell you that I know all the ins and outs and the whys of what you're facing. But I will tell you that we know the one who does. We know the one who does. And he has shown himself faithful and trustworthy. And he is not a God that he should lie. And I have never, ever seen the righteous forsaken. Not one time. He is strategically orchestrating things that we cannot understand and we're not meant to understand and he is turning things that the enemy meant for our harm to our good has he not shown our love for us in unfathomable ways you know i was just pondering on that his love for us and and these suddenly moments and as i was preparing this message the lord brought to my remembrance beautiful lyrics to a song it it just shook me Every time I heard it, it, it would just, it, it touched my heart. And it was a song by Clay Cross. And the song was called, If That's What It Takes. And I felt led to share some of these lyrics because the writer puts into words the emotions that I can't find the words for. So here we go. The words are, you say you fell out of love with no place to stand. You say your heart's on the mend from a broken romance. You say you don't want to trust because it hurts too much. And you think, I'd never understand. Tell me what I've got to do to make a believer of you. Do I have to turn the water into wine? Do I have to turn some stone into bread? Do I have to paint my heart across the sky in a blazing shade of red? Do I have to push the sun into the sea to make you fall in love with me? Oh, if that's what it takes, then let it be. You say you don't need my love, but I know it's a lie. You say I shouldn't even try. Tell me what I've got to lose to make a believer out of you. Do I have to turn the water into wine? Do I have to turn some stones into bread? Do I have to paint my heart across the sky in a blazing shade of red? Do I have to push the sun into the sea to make you fall in love with me? Oh, if that's what it takes, then let it be. You need me to turn the tide of your ocean and let me set your heart back into motion. It is amazing to think that all these things that God has orchestrated, it, it's for our enjoyment. It's for our pleasure. It's, God is just so awesome. I, I'm, another thing, for, the, for about three weeks, when I was driving to work, I, the sunrise would come up in my rearview mirror. And as there's a particular curb um, going into, right before we get into Manila, probably around the Big Lake area. And uh, so in my rearview mirror, this, the sun's popping up. And I, I promise you, it, it was so clearly spoken to my spirit, it, it might as well have been audible. But he said, my light is driving out the darkness. For like three or four weeks, daily. And it would catch me by surprise every time when he would do that. But, you know, I believe that we are on the brink of a revival and that this revival is unparalleled in history. And I believe that it's going to come suddenly and that it will take our breath. In Acts 16, the account of Paul and Silas being thrown into prison for casting demonic spirits out of a woman. I'm going to, um, I'm going to read that passage uh, out of the, I think this is the Amplified Version. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God. 
who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. And when the owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and they are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us as Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received those orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and at once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. And the jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword, and he was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights. He rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Paul and Silas were stripped and beaten and thrown in jail. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> if I was in their shoes... <laughs> I probably would have been a little hot under the collar at God for even allowing it to happen when I was clearly doing his work. They praised God anyway. Just like Job, they were steadfast in their faith. There is no way that they could have possibly known what was going to happen in their praise and worship. There's no way they could have known what was fixing to happen. And as that earthquake shook the ground and those walls crumbled, their astonishment had to have been unmatched. They were not expecting or asking for a suddenly. But in their despair and in their anguish and in their pain, not knowing if they would live or die, they praised. And as those walls came down, the jailer was about to do himself in, but they called out to him that they were there. And it led to the salvation of to his salvation, to the salvation of his household. In Ezekiel 37, this suddenly brought life to dead bones. So don't let go of that dream that you thought was dead in the water. Watch what God will do. In Acts 9-3, the suddenly even brought salvation and a name change on that road to Damascus. In 2 Chronicles Chapter 20, verse 21 through 24. And I've got to tell you that is probably one of my most favorite Old Testament uh, stories. I, I absolutely love this story. And this is when King Jehoshaphat was going to war. It says, after talking it over with the people, Jehoshaphat appointed a choir for God dressed in holy robes. And they were to march ahead of the troops singing, give thanks to God. His love never quits. As soon as they started shouting and praising, God set ambushes against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir as they were attacking Judah, and they all ended up dead. The Ammonites and the Moabites mistakenly attached those from Mount Seir and massacred them. And then, further confused, they went at each other, and they all ended up killed. As Judah came up over the rise, looking into the wilderness for the horde of barbarians, that they looked on a killing field of dead bodies, not a living soul among them. Jehoshaphat and his people knew that in order to win their war, praise had to come first. See, God wants us to praise him beforehand, just because of who he is not just after a victory. 
after he's done a great and mighty work in our life. He wants us to praise him even when we don't know what's coming next. And I believe that if we make it a habitual practice to constantly worship, adore, and exalt the Lord God, we will see suddenly moments be the norm in our life. What does it take to get us suddenly? I was pondering this. And I have a little bit, I think you call it an acronym for suddenly. So S. So if you're taking notes, put your S, okay? Number one, S, submerge ourselves in God's word. When we submerge ourselves in God's word, our mind is renewed. We are given ammunition against the enemy. And when the enemy tries to confuse us and bombard us with lies, we will have the truth of God's word to fight back with. And his word gives us authority to combat and thwart the wiles of the enemy. And it is so crucial for us to recognize the authority that we have over the enemy and use it. The enemy will use every tactic in the world to distract us from arming ourselves against him. You unwavering we need to be steadfast and unwavering in our belief and faith in our Lord and Savior we must be focused like a racehorse that has blinders on each side of his eyes during the race to keep him focused on what's before him we must be focused on the Lord never doubting never wavering in our stance on his promise and remind him of his promises don't be afraid to remind him of his promises. Our prayer time shouldn't just be begging and pleading and crying. Oh, Lord, please do this. Oh, Lord, please do that. Oh, Lord, I'm really in a bind. Lord, I need a miracle. Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. He is not a slot machine. Okay? He is not a slot machine. And we should, all we have to do is just remind him of his promises. Not ask for anything, but just remind him of his promises. The first deed, suddenly, declare it. We all know that there is the power of life and death in the tongue and that words are powerful. Never forget that God created everything by speaking it, and it was. Again, God does not need days, weeks, months, or years. And also consider that to everything there is a season. When the time for that season is to end, it can end abruptly. And I am convinced that suddenly God will show himself. And he will do it unconventionally and in a manner that no man can take the glory for. God will get the glory in this. It's not going to happen in a manner that man can receive the glory. Because this is all God. This is, this is his. It's going to be all his doing. Not ours. Not in ourself. The second day is decisively stand your ground. Draw a line in the sand. Measure every thought and every word spoken against God's word. E, expectation. When we pray, we need to expect that God will show himself faithful. I've said this before and I'll say it again. If expectations were money and you get what you pay for, the results would speak for itself. The results would speak for itself. In new perception, things are not always as they are perceived, as they appear. L, let go. Let go of preconceived ideas, fears, doubts, habits, and the familiar. God can and will move suddenly. What if it's not what we expected? Mm. What if he does something radically different in our life? Ooh. What if his plans are not your plans and his thoughts are not your thoughts? Will you be open to doing things his way? Or will you resist? Why? yield. He's given us evidence of his trustworthiness. And if we are willing to give up control to him, we can not 
fail. He is a God that has good plans for us. And if we try to maintain control of the rings, we will mess our life up royally every time. We don't have to fix everything. Someone needs to hear that. Satan wants to encumber us under the weight of the notion that gives us a sense of helplessness, and we are not helpless. We were never meant to have that responsibility. We were never meant to have that responsibility. Let God do his thing. Let God do his thing. I hope that somebody's heart was touched tonight. I hope that this was seared in somebody's mind, that somebody was encouraged. Let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the word that's come forth. Lord, we thank you, God, that you are the God of suddenlies. And Lord, we just take a moment to just praise you. We praise you just because of who you are. Lord, we thank you that we don't have to have control of everything. I don't want control of everything because I know I would mess it up. Lord, we put our trust in you. Lord, we put our trust in you. The things that are going on in our life, the circumstances that, Lord, that are bogging us down, Lord, we thank you that they're only temporary. They are only temporary, and we give you glory and honor and praise. Lord, we ask that you keep us through the week. Bring us back safely together next Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen.